The five shots that you need when shooting B-roll to help you complement the story that you are filming. Welcome back to another Quick Tip Tuesdays. My name is Camillo for DKD21 Media. If you're new to the channel, I make videos about filmmaking gear and kind of teaching you how to step up your production. So if that's something that you're into, consider subscribing. So this isn't a video to show you how to do those epic handheld B-roll shots that you're seeing around on YouTube. This video is to give you a checklist of stuff that you should try to film when you're doing corporate gigs, events, weddings, and all of the above. You know, people always say, shoot to edit, shoot to edit. This for me is shooting to edit. So when I film things, I have an outside in mentality because I'm a big picture person. So I like to grab the widest thing first and then I like to go into details. Now, obviously this can change the edit. You might want to start with things close up and then tease the final establish and reveal. But the idea for this is to kind of give you some guidance when you're going out to shoot. So the first shot that you want to get is a wide shot. This is to, to establish what it is that we're filming. Now, you could just go into any room and film the widest thing that you can, but there are a couple things that you want to consider first. What is the video that you're shooting? You can see in this example here, I'm shooting for a bike shop. And the first shot that I do is a wide shot that shows the logo and the counter. I followed this with some other shots of speakers to kind of sell the fact that this brand is rhythm and bikes and they love to play really cool tunes when they're fixing their bikes. Like I said, everything here is to help you tell your story. So number two is an action close-up. This takes us a little deeper into the story and it shows us what it is that's actually happening. In the bike example, we have somebody using an angle grinder and checking a tire, which shows exactly what it is that they do in the bike shop. In this club scene, we see an artist playing with a guitar, getting close to the microphone, it shows us that we are in a club and there's an artist there who's about to play some music. Here we see an artist, we've already seen that she's in an art room and now she's stapling in a canvas to show that she's preparing something to be painted. So these are close-up shots that have action elements to them. Okay, number three is the reaction shot. Like Newton said, every action will have an equal and opposite reaction in the opposite direction. Jokes aside, the reason for the reaction shot is because we want to put our viewers in a perspective of the people that are involved in our story. In the case of the artist, we've established where she is, We've shown close-ups of some actions and now we're showing her reaction from what she's doing. Equally, when filming an event, like in this case, we've seen the artist prepare the instruments and now we're seeing the reaction shot of people reacting to his music and showing that they're enjoying it. And it kind of brings us in to the world that is this video. So the fourth type of B-roll that you wanna be filming are details and fillers. Now this is the stuff that most people just end up filming the whole time and then maybe the white shot and then they call it a day. Now there's nothing really wrong with that. The only thing is that you're really only seeing two types of shots in your story. You're seeing where they are and you're seeing details of where they are. You're not really going into the story of the video as much. What I mean by fillers are the decoration. If we're in a club, we wanna see the lights. If we're in a bike shop, we wanna see the bike clock. We wanna see the tools that they have. And the reason I said fillers is because they help fill the story in the edit. If you're doing an interview with some B-roll and they talk about how they live in this certain place, you wanna know what the details are, what the kind of, what things they see on a day-to-day -day basis. And the fifth and final shot that you wanna to try to get in your B-roll is the motivated shot or the motivated movement shot. A motivated shot, motivated movement is basically when something motivates your camera to move. Be that a tracking shot when you're following somebody walk, be that following somebody's hands as they're painting. Now this shot is very fun because you can get very creative with it. Here with a painter, I'm kind of moving my hand as she's moving her hand in the painting. Apart from making your videos more dynamic by having some motivated shots, you really are putting the viewer in the perspective of the person. But anyways, I hope these helped. If you like this video, make sure you leave it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when I make a new video and not just get recommended randomly by YouTube.